Is knuckle conditioning bro science? Well, much like anything in life, the answer is yes and no. There's a reason that portions of the traditional practices of knuckle conditioning have stood the test of time. However, there are also parts that are pretty pseudoscientific. So this video is gonna provide some education on the science behind what's probably happening during knuckle conditioning and help you continue to train the ways that work. So let's start with what our ancestors have likely been right about all along. And this is the concept of nerve desensitization, although they didn't call it that. In fact, most of the time when people talk about punching different structures of varying densities and textures, this is what they're referring to. We'll talk about nerve sensitization first. This happens when your nervous system is hypersensitive. It begins to recognize non-noxious stimuli, a stimulus that doesn't usually cause pain, as a noxious stimulus or a stimulus that normally does cause pain. For example, let's say that somebody has the peripheral nervous system is sensitized to the skin on the back of their hand. This could mean that something as simple as a napkin brushing up against the back of the hand could cause pain. When appropriate in these situations, we as clinicians may prescribe nerve desensitization techniques as a part of a patient's treatment plan. And it might look something like this. Find a texture that causes a little discomfort and use that texture to brush against the affected area for up to five minutes at a time for eight to 10 times a day. Eventually, you begin to increase the coarseness of the material and the nervous system becomes desensitized to non-noxious stimulus. And I've had to personally do this whenever I broke my forearm during my football days. The area of skin around my scar after surgery was super sensitive to things that shouldn't be painful. So I began with tissue paper and I began to work my way up to textures that were much more coarse and now I don't have any random shooting pains over my scar or issues with wearing watches or bands. So here's the difference with what combat athletes are trying to do. With a sensitized nerve, the sensitivity level is here and we're trying to bring it back to normal levels. With combat athletes, generally you are already at normal levels, meaning that you're supposed to feel discomfort in most of these situations. So when we're training to desensitize our nerves, we have to actually put ourselves into positions where they're supposed to be pain. And this is what our ancestors realized. By gradually increasing the roughness and or density of the surface, we slowly begin to desensitize our nervous system more and more, which leads to less pain, making it more tolerable during striking and sparring. But we have to be careful. Our nervous system needs to be able to detect pain. So punching walls and trees probably isn't the best way to do this. Bare knuckle punching to the heavy bag probably gets most of the work done here. It's a relatively tough surface and you get a lot of variation with how the skin contacts the bag when you're punching from different angles. I mean, the occasional punch to the wall or a tree is probably okay for a party trick. I mean, I guess depending on what kind of party you're at. But overall, probably not needed for your day-to-day -day training. Now, let's address the part of knuckle conditioning that isn't supported by science. And that's that punching these surfaces that we just talked about is making your bone stronger. There is a small grain of truth to this. So if you watch my shin conditioning video, you know that the science suggests that bones remodel based on the total mechanical environment that we put them in. So yes, you may get some positive adaptation from punching hard surfaces, but the truth of the matter is that you're actually doing more for your nerves than you are for your bones, given how your bones remodel. This is also almost certainly not the best way to go about it because you're also significantly increasing your risk for injury, including cuts, scrapes, potential fractures, etc. And much like I mentioned in the shin conditioning video, if you aren't already doing this, weight training should be your first step. The research is very clear that pulling of the muscles on the bones and their attachments, coupled with the multi-directional forces that gravity places on the bones themselves, promotes positive adaptations in bone remodeling. And as far as specific exercises go, if you haven't already been lifting weights, it really doesn't matter that much. Just incorporating some traditional push, pull, and grip specific exercises will help tremendously. And if you want some ideas on how to increase your grip strength, I actually made a video on how I increase my grip strength for jujitsu, and I'll link it down below. Because let's be very clear, we aren't just talking about improving bone density in only our knuckles. What we do want is for our entire upper quarter skeletal system to positively adapt including the metacarpals, carpal bones, the radius and ulna of our forearms, the humerus of our upper arm, all the way to the scapula, the shoulder blade that helps deliver the arm during punching. So pick a couple of exercises, preferably one or two of them being closed chain exercises with your hand on a fixed surface and be consistent. Now, once you've begun to incorporate this, or if you already lift weights, striking the heavy bag with gloves could be a decent way to promote bone remodeling in your upper extremities. Again, like I mentioned in the shin conditioning video, there's a good amount of research that suggests that our bones respond favorably to multi-directional impacts in quick, powerful, and unbalanced distributions. Yes, gloves are going to disperse the force of the impact partially, lessening the stimulus to the bone. But the good thing about gloves is that we can strike harder and more often while keeping the reduced risk for injury. So if we're striking with a lot of power and speed without gloves, and we hit our wrist at kind of a weird angle, it's more likely that we injure our wrists. Gloves allow us a little bit more room for error while we're throwing our most powerful punches. I actually like the advice that Mike gives from Hard to Hurts YouTube video here. 
Take a look. All of our bones, make sure they are in alignment because when you hit this bare knuckle wrong, you'll find out right away. In the gloves, I could get away with hitting like this, right? The gloves sort of like smooth over all the errors in my form and technique. Whereas the heavy bag with no gloves or wraps on won't lie to me as much. That's why I like this one. I can pick different angles because that's what I'm testing. My technique and my accuracy and how I line up my shots. So use bare knuckle to hone in on your craft and use gloves when power and speed are your focus. Seems to be a good bit of advice. I'd like to add too that knuckle conditioning doesn't seem to be implying that we're just talking about bone remodeling. When the term is used, it often means the hand and the wrist complex in its entirety, which is a good thing. Consequently, quick and powerful movements are super beneficial for ligaments, of which there are many in the hand, and tendons as well, provided that there's a sufficient time to recover. It also pays to know that these tissues also have different adaptation times as well. And this is why it takes months and even years to develop the coveted iron fist. Take me for example. Recently I took a couple months off to focus on some other life goals. And I didn't get to train at all during this time. And as I eased back with a couple of rounds of kicks to the bag, my shins felt sore for a couple of hours after, since they hadn't been receiving that type of stimulus for a while. Like I talk about in most of my videos, this stuff takes time. So be patient and intentional with your training. So to summarize, know that bare knuckle striking is probably doing more to desensitize your nervous system rather than promote bone remodeling in your hand. And second, make sure you have a good established weight training regimen if building bone density is your focus. And third, again, if building bone density is your focus, use gloves when striking. And these sessions should be intentional, quick, and powerful strikes. This is certainly not a comprehensive overview, so if you want me to do a super nerdy deep dive, let me know in the comments. But we can get into the real nitty gritty in the gray areas about what the science says. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.